Welcome to another episode of Jim's Up My Garden. Okay, so I've left the <coughs> I've left the chilies in here as long as I possibly could do. This is a lot longer than I would normally, but because the weather's been mild, um, I've, you know, I thought even though the you know that one little bit of frost we had took the leaves off, I've left them in here to ripen as much as possible. Now, what I will be doing is taking all of these chilies off now, chopping them up, and uh, putting them in the freezer so I can bob them in various dishes um, as we go through the winter. Um, but the uh, there's quite a few on the the lemon, uh, the uh, the chili pepper um, lemon um, that haven't really ripened, but uh, you know they'll still be okay to eat. But obviously, all these ones on the end here have properly ripened, so I'll be chopping those up as well. Um, so those, that's what the chilies look like, as you can see, they have they have ripened quite well. So I'll be, as I say, chopping those up um, today, putting those in the freezer, ready to be used in the winter. Okay, the sunflower seeds are growing quite nicely, but as you can see, um, I've had a mouse in here, and a mouse has been helping himself to the to the seeds. Not that I'm concerned about that. Um, that's that's okay as long as I've got enough seeds for myself. So what I'll do is I'll save some of these seeds like on here um, for for growing next year, and I'll give the rest of the chickens. But uh, as you can see, a mouse has already helped himself, uh, which I'm not concerned about. You know, the mouse is more than welcome to a few. I've got more than enough, and I'll um, I'll put the um, seeds up in an envelope um, for next year and uh, that'll be the sunflowers done. Okay so these are the last few um, apples on the tree and as you can see um, I've, got, I've still got quite a few on there. These are the ones that haven't been eaten yet. Uh, now that most of the leaves have come off the tree um, what I'll be doing is picking the rest um, and um, what, what we don't eat today I'll probably eat all of these today to be honest with you. Um, there's a nice one there, uh, but what I will be doing is, um, or, or what you should be doing at this time of year, as soon as the leaves have come off the tree, uh, if you haven't already picked the apples, what you should be doing is um, putting them in the shed, not letting them, and, and sort of put them on a, a tray so they're not touching each other. So if any of them do go um, bad, it won't send the rest of the um, apples round it bad. And then you can put those in, um, you know, the shed, and they'll stay in a dark place, well ventilated, and they'll, they'll store in there for quite a few months. Now this tree here um, is one that I planted um, 18 years ago now, and uh, it should have three different types of apples on it. Um, it should have three grafts on, so we should have one eating apple, and then a, uh, a green apple, one red eating apple, and then these ones that you can see here are actually cooking apples. Uh, but unfortunately the tree is only ever um, produced um, cooking apples, so I'm not quite sure why. But obviously, this is this is this is obviously where it was originally um, grafted here. Um, so I'm assuming that this is one graft, this is another graft, and that's another graft there. But all all of the grafts basically produce these cooking apples. Not that I'm complaining, but uh, anyway, that's the apples. And what I'll be doing is uh, picking these today. Just by just by doing that, they'll come off quite easy this time of year, and that will produce a nice. Um, apple pie for my apple and ginger pie. Okay, just a quick uh, quick update on the um, the birdo score. I don't know if you can see um, this 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 top section here. Um, that now that's how they dry out. So they will go this sort of darker sort of brown colour, and you get the sort of on the top. Now that this is basically um, the method of how they dry out. Now that will basically go down and it'll end up, the whole thing will end up that colour um, and then basically you need to, um, don't be don't be too concerned if it looks um, sort of old and mouldy or anything like that they will, this is this is part of, obviously there's a there's a lot of moisture inside here and that moisture has to come out 
um, for it to dry off so you can use it for various things so um, you know they will start to go at the top like that and then it will work the way down and then uh, it'll dry out and then you'll be okay um, so what I'm going to do is get these out of the greenhouse now because what I don't want is frost to damage them in any way so I'll be putting these in the shed where they're a little bit better protected make sure there's somewhere where there's plenty of uh, ventilation so that uh, you know you don't get a build up of moisture uh, which which may cause any sort of mould or anything like that to form on them and then the butternut squashes that they're now going to go down to the house um, and what I will be doing with those is the ones that we don't um, use immediately what I'll be doing is chopping them up um, into roastable um, chunks if you like and then uh, I'll be putting those in the freezer to be used over the winter months Now the asparagus berries, as you can see, um, have most certainly ripened. So all you need to do is pull your hand up like that and uh, put, them in, put them in a tub. Now what I'm going to be doing is growing some more from seed next year, as I've explained before. Um, now in each one of these little berries, what you'll get is about three or four seeds. Um, but what is important is you, you dry them out in the greenhouse. Um, and basically what will happen is these berries will turn like a brown colour and then some of them will actually turn completely black. You don't need too many because as I say you know you've got sort of four or five um, seeds in each one so just just pick the the biggest ones really um, and then that'll be more than enough for you to um, to grow some more plants next year and um, so for some reason I don't know why but only this one has actually uh, generated berries um, this year normally they've all got berries on them but uh, there's some more over here on this one here so that's that's probably going to be more than enough for me, what I've got in there. As you can see, so I've got about, probably about 20 berries or so, so I'm showing you something red against red. But uh, about that many. What I'll do, I'll just pick a few more. Uh, now what I did want to say to you is, what is important this time of year, um, sorry, you can see the black berries in that one there. Look. See, there's about five or six um, little sort of blackberries, uh, uh, black seeds in each one and obviously each one of those will create a plant so every berry's got about five, the potential for five plants inside so that'll be more than enough for me so I don't really need any more so I'll put those in the greenhouse to dry out and uh, I'll be planting them um, early in the spring now for the, for the rest of the um, asparagus what is important now is I cut all this down to the ground. The reason being is as the wind blows, these these plants are going to rock, and what it does is actually damages the plant at the bottom. So what you need to do is cut the plant off at about I don't know two or three inches off the ground, um, and then remove all of this. Um, it's not brilliant for composting to be honest with you because it's quite woody, so you can either shred it or burn it or um, you know if you do put it in the compost, it's going to take probably a couple of years to rot down. So um, what you can do is um, either shred it or um, just let it dry out and burn it. But uh, I'll be cutting this down now to about sort of two or three inches off the ground. Um, don't go too low because you don't want to damage the uh, the roots. And uh, don't go so high that if anything walks across there it's going to damage it. But as these are rocking, what it will do is it will rock the, um, the, uh, the bottom of the plant in the ground and basically um, damage the roots. So, it's important at this time of year that you cut it all down to ground level um, before the high winds start, and then um, you know that will protect the uh, the ground uh, the, the plants in the ground. What is also a good idea at this time of year as well is to put a mulch of um, wood chippings or something like that over the top of them, and that will just sort of protect them a little bit against the uh, the elements as well. But uh, what you don't want to do is um, asparagus don't, doesn't like the ground to be too wet, so if you are in a wet area, um, you know don't put too much. Um, sort of mulch on you put it on there just to protect it against frost and stuff um, but what you don't want to do is put too, so much on that it holds the moisture in the ground um, you know because asparagus doesn't like it too damp but I'll I'll cut this down now um, and, I'll, and I'll and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done okay so all all you need to do basically is uh, as you can see these are the bases of the plant so all you need to do is chop off uh, something like that near the bottom like that and then take out, um, take out the plants like that. Now, obviously, um, what you can do at the same time is uh, have, a, have a good weed round as well to get any any weeds out. But most of these will have died off now anyway. 
um, but we've got some dandelions in here and whilst you can get at the ground it's a good idea just to get those get those out now I'll see what I would suggest is for example I've got a raspberry there um, you know put out cut out anything like that um, but what I, would, what I wouldn't suggest is you get um, a trowel or something like that and sort of dig it out what you want to do is try your best obviously dandelions aren't going to come out but uh, what you don't want to do is disturb the ground too much because you'll damage the roots of the asparagus but um, so these are the these are the ones that have now been cut out like that and then I can put these on to dry and uh, I can um, get these on the fire in a couple of weeks time okay so that's asparagus um, we'll put down as you can see there are the um, there are the asparagus stalks there that I've cut down to about kind of two inches off the ground now the fact that we've got um, some mushrooms in here shows that um, there is a little bit of damp um, in the ground and obviously that's to be avoided because that's what will cause effectively damage to the um, um, asparagus now moving forward to next year obviously I planted the uh, the comfrey at this end here um, and I, that that did kind of grow over um, it's quite an invasive plant um, uh, comfrey and it did kind of sort of smother that that, that sort of top row there so what I'm going to do is put um, is fashion some kind of um, sort of fence over there to make it grow upward rather than um, you know to the over the um, asparagus so it did kind of flop over a little bit so what I'm going to do is put some um, probably some mesh um, from from around here uh, to you know from the corner of the greenhouse across to there just so it um, you know contains the comfrey a little bit better in there so in a couple of weeks time what I will be doing is cutting down uh, the remainder of the comfrey um, and putting that in the bin to make some tea for next year and then um, what I will be doing is fashioning some kind of fence across there just to try to contain it a little bit in there um, and uh, so it doesn't kind of sort of, sort of flop over the, um, the asparagus and cause any damage. Now one thing I have done is um, I've noted where there's the spaces in the asparagus so this area here um, there isn't any um, asparagus plants um, also at the back there there's a, there's a space at the top there and also here um, there's a space and also here now I shan't be planting them out yet but in the spring the asparagus plants that I grew this year which are currently over here um, I'll be planting these out now it's still going to take uh, it's still going to take a couple of years for these to come to fruition obviously they've died back at the moment but these are the um, asparagus plants that we grew from the beginning of this year and I'll plant those out um, next year um, in the spring so that they can uh, um, sort of grow on so I've, I've, I've kind of noted where the spaces are if you like uh, where there aren't any asparagus plants and I'll be uh, planting some more I've, I've also uh, inherited a few other um, asparagus plants which I've established so I'll be putting those in as well at the same time so next year I should have a lot more um, asparagus growing now um, I'm going to plant them as I say I'm going to plant them in the spring uh, you can either plant them sort of late um, summer or you can plant them in the spring um, but um, as as it's this time of year now, what I will do is plant them in the uh, the spring, and I'll show you um, I'll show you me doing that when I do it. But that'll be um, in the sort of I don't know February March time of next year. Um, so all there really is to do now with this part of the garden is uh, just to tie back the remainder of the the raspberries. Some of them are not quite tied back. And what I'm going to be doing is just taking off the top. Um, of the uh, the raspberry so um, and that again that's so that the wind doesn't damage them so what I'll be taking is probably the top um, uh, you know the top sort of foot or so off there um, so that when the wind blows because we have quite a lot of wind here um, you know it doesn't damage them so I'm just going to make sure that they're all nicely tied up taking out any dead ones like this one here that's clearly finished uh, you can tell that by well apart from the fact it'll, it'll if you just pull it like that it'll, it'll break out so that's typically how I get them out. Um, if you pull it and it's bendy like that one, that's obviously okay. Any that are like this, if you pull them and they break. Um, so the, it, it's quite easy to get out the dead ones at this time of year because they're quite brittle and they'll break as you pull them. If you pull them and they don't break, you know, don't pull too hard, but if you if you pull them and they break, then you know that they're um, they're just about finished. So there's the asparagus plants that I've fetched out, and I'll, I'll basically burn all of that in the, as soon as it's dried out. So tie back all of the raspberries that are, um, that are going to be fruiting next year, even though you've got fruit on them like this 
evidence of fruit being on them this year. Um, these ones probably will fruit again next year. I mean, there's even, you can see them there, there's still fruit on there. Obviously, they're no good for eating. But, um, so tar them all back. Any that are obviously dead that have gone like a silvery colour, fetch them out and um, thin them out. And then uh, when you get to the bottom, uh, be careful that you don't break any of the, uh, the bottom. What I typically do is pull, pull the top bit out and then cut it off at the bottom with some secateurs to get the bottom bit out. And then tie them off and then take off the top. Um, you can see here what I did last year. So I left about um, up to about sort of five foot or so just, just, just off the support there. Uh, so just take off the top this bit kind of here. And what I find is that um, prevents them from getting blown about and damaged in the winter. So that'll be the raspberries, um, and when I've done that, I'll show you that'll neaten all that up. Um, obviously, at the beginning of the year, I did start to put some uh, um, shuttering in there because what I was going to do was fill that with um, with, uh, with some muck. Um, so I will, um, whilst the whilst the plants have died back, I will continue that. So that's one little project for the winter, um, and um, you know, do that all the way around, and then I can mulch that with um, some muck. Um, and that's the uh, that's the raspberries for you. Um, the only other thing kind of here is obviously I need to get out all of the um, all of the uh, birdhouse gourd vines off the off this one here uh, which will, which won't take too much that'll just basically pull out all the old uh, all the old vines and that'll be ready again for next year so that's this end of the garden pretty much tidy obviously apart from the strawberries now I've had some thoughts on the strawberries and what I'm going to do is um, ideally what, what you don't want to do is plant um, your strawberries back into the same bed as you had them before. Um, so what I've decided to do is move the strawberries from here um, to here. So in the spring what I'll be doing, or over the winter at least, is moving the strawberry patch from there to here. So I'm going to have a long thin one across the, um, uh, the allotment here. Probably only from the, from the trees, probably about a metre or metre and a half. Um, of the ground. So this is already dug out, I've already got the uh, the potatoes out, there's just these potatoes left here now. So what I'll be doing is digging all this over um, and getting it all nice and level. Then I'll transplant any of the new plants from here, all the ones that I've been growing in the in the greenhouse and that, over to the, the new patch and then I'll be digging all of this out. Next year I'll grow potatoes um, in here or onions, I'm not quite sure what to do yet. Um, and then as soon as the back end of next year, what I'll do this is had a season off then. What I'll then do is transplant the, the strawberries back to uh, to this bit here. So I'm, I'm basically going to give it a year off next year, if you like. So, because um, for me, ideally, I'd like to keep the uh, the perennials, um, all the, you know, the plants that never change at this end of the uh, allotment, if I can. So, but next year, I'm going to be growing something other than strawberries here. They're going to transplant over there, and then, um, or at least that's the plan. And then I'll... Um, at the back end of next year, so this time again next year, this will have had a, a year of um, potatoes in there, I think it's probably what's going to go in here to keep the ground nice and clean. Um, and then I'll be able to dig all this over again, get it, you know, get it all nice, plenty of muck and organic material in there, then I'll be able to put the, uh, the strawberry plants back in um, this, um, this section of the um, allotment then. So that's the top end um, at the middle of November. Okay, the runner beans have really dried out now, so you know, just by just by putting my thumb in them now, as you can see, you know, the the, the the shells have hardened off, and you can easily get the seeds out. So what I'll be doing is um, shelling these later um, today, uh, just basically just doing that, putting your finger through, and then you can get the seeds out. And obviously, in each one, you should be getting sort of four or five seeds at least. Um, and then I'll be drying them off a little bit more. I mean, these are really dry now, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll add these in the green now, so around a month now. Uh, but they've, they've sort of dried off and all you need to do is, as I say, you know, it's easy with two hands, but just run your fingers through like that, get the seeds out and then store the seeds in a, in a um, brown paper bag um, somewhere nice and dry in the house um, or an envelope or something like that, a brown envelope, and then they'll, um, they'll keep for next year. Okay, quick update on the kale. Now, um, in here, as you know, we've got two different types of, well, three different types of kale, in fact. Um, at, the, at the back there, the largest kale, that's the Petrage kale that was um, 
seeds were sent to me by Richard Sydenham, so big thank you for that. And also at the front here we've got the, the, uh, the Scottish kale, which is not quite as big. Now, I have actually um, started cropping it um, over the past couple of weeks, and um, it is really nice. Now we've had a frost, um, the, uh, the leaves are really sweet, and uh, um, it's almost like, um, to be honest with you, when, what I do is I always shred it up like um, spinach and um, boil it for about sort of 10-15 minutes and um, it is it is almost like eating um, spinach to be honest with you the taste isn't so strong sort of su such a strong brassica type taste um, you know it's quite a delicate taste and it is um, it is really a nice vegetable so uh, the, you know the leaves are um, you know sort of quite tender and what I've been doing is taking off the larger leaves from the, um, the sort of the underneath of the plant and obviously hoping that the the, uh, the you know the sort of the heart the um, you know you know these younger parts of the plant here will then grow on and I'll be able to harvest those in a, um, a month or so's time but um, but that this um, the petrage kale and the Scottish kale I've done really well and I uh, just want to say a big thank you to Richard the um, most certainly the uh, the curly kale which is this kale at the front here hasn't hasn't been quite as good this year um, I did have a comment a couple of weeks ago about how slow it is growing uh, when you can just see the difference between that and that, you know, the, the, this is like a jungle in comparison to the uh, the curly kale. And to be honest with you, the curly kale leaves are quite tough. Um, you know, once they cook, there's, you know, there's still quite a crunch to them, uh, which is nice. But the I've got to be honest with you, for me, the petrage kale and the uh, the Scottish kale is a better um, vegetable to have on your plate than the uh, the curly kale. To be honest with you, but that's what the curly kale looks like at the moment. Um, and the petrage and the Scottish kale, and I'll just show you the um, I'll just show you the tunnel down the bottom where the um, uh, the rest of it. Okay, going. so here's the second tunnel. As you can see, this is where I've been cropping the um, cropping the um, Scottish kale. The uh, the spinach down this side here is pretty much finished. I'm still getting some um, young leaves coming through. Um, I've had a couple of plants bolt at the end there. Um, as you can see, that's the seed um, pods there. But the the, the petrage kale has done really well. Now we've had a frost, um, the leaves are nice and sweet. Now, at the end here, uh, I don't know if you can see, I can't really climb through, uh, but at the end there, that's the um, uh, the, uh, the flowering sprout um, plants. Now, I've not shown you these for a while now. Um, as you can see, these are now forming the... What they, what they do is they form little sort of little growths on the side. Um, and they are just about starting to grow these little sort of growths now. So hopefully I'll be able to show you those in a couple of weeks time um, where I can um, start to crop those but so far they've just kind of grown into a which something that looks or resembles a sprout plant to be honest with you so they've not actually grown the side bits yet but hopefully I'll be able to show you those in a couple of weeks time as soon as they've started to form the, the, uh, the side shoots. But uh, this is what the second tunnel looks like as I say the spinach um, you know, we've picked and picked and picked at this and uh, we've had uh, a really good crop out of that. Um, but uh, that's where we are at the moment. OK, a really quick update on the ochre. As you can see, um, uh, we've had a couple of um, frosts now and as you can see, the, uh, the tops have really died down. But I have still got... Um, leaves on the plant and that, they are still feeding the uh, the tubers under the ground so uh, what I'm going to do is leave them for another um, week or so till we get into December and then I'll be harvesting these um, as you know as I say in two or three weeks time and um, sort of getting them all out and washing them and seeing what sort of crop that we've got but that's what the ochre looks like at the moment um, today being the 26th or 7th of uh, November so in, as I say in a couple of weeks time I'll be um, digging those out and um, seeing what we've got. Okay, this is the this is the second Swede row here, and as you can see, what we have had is um, a bit of slug damage. You can actually see a slug inside that one actually, but um, the slugs just started to attack the side of some of them, which is unusual. Um, but it seems to be more prevalent this year than it has been in the past. Uh, you can see on this one here as well how they've sort of eaten into it and they've made a hole in there but um, that's a problem that I've had with the, uh, the Swede this year I don't really know how to get round that apart from pouring slug pallets around everything but um, what I have started to do is started to pick the, uh, the Swede and then where I've got a number of them together obviously I'll take the biggest one and then leave the smaller ones to grow on
during the winter, but uh, that's what the Swedes look like. Uh, the parsnips, I'm going to start cropping these before too much longer. But as you can see, the tops have now kind of died off a little bit. But you can see there's the top of one. So you can see the, the top of that is probably about um, four inches or possibly five inches across. Um, so I'm, I'm expecting some really nice parsnips this year. But uh, those are the two rows there. And as you can see, the tops have started to die off, which is a good sign that uh, we have had a frost and you can start to um, to lift them and start to uh, use them in the kitchen. Now with parsnips it's always better to let them have a frost in the ground because the, the starches and the and that which are in the, the root will then turn to sugar and so it's a, it's a much um, sort of sweeter vegetable to eat as soon as you've had a frost. Very much like the, um, very much like the, uh, the kale. Um, let them have a frost first and then when you dig them up they'll be considerably better flavoured. Uh, the leeks haven't done brilliantly this year, um, I was a little bit late putting those in, um, but um, yeah, the leeks haven't done well this year at all really. Um, these are the uh, the beetroot, um, now this, this end of the row here has done well, um, that back end of the row there, those two rows there, haven't done particularly well, however, um, I will be... Um, I have picked out a few large ones out of there and some large ones this side but uh, they've not done too badly but uh, I've, I've, I've definitely had better beetroot than that. As you know I had beetroot here as well and these these have done better than them ones there. And then in here these are the uh, the Swede, uh, sorry the um, turnips. As you can see the turnips aren't doing too bad. Um, again I've had better years with turnips but uh, um, but yeah, out of a row I've probably got about eight or nine and they're only kind of small at the moment. But uh, yeah, um, not, not a brilliant crop this year, but uh, nevertheless um, a crop. So anyway, so that's what the bottom end looks like at the moment. And I'll, um, I'll start to harvest um, these vegetables in the next um, few weeks. Uh, the only other thing I did want to quickly show you whilst we were down here was the, uh, the mashua. Um, now, when I showed you this um, a couple of weeks ago, um, so I'll just climb over the parsnips. When I showed you this um, a couple of weeks ago, there were still quite a lot of leaves on there, but as you can see now, the leaves have really died off. So I think it's now time for me to take all of this framework down and um, dig them up and see what we've got under the ground. So I will be doing that um, in the next um, couple of weeks. And I'll show you uh, what that looks like when I uh, get around to do it. Actually, that's actually one there. Look. I've just found that growing out of there. But that's that's actually uh, one of the mashua tubers. Um, but what I'll do is I'll dig that up um, um, next week or the week after. And I'll um, show you what it looks like. But uh, you can actually see the tuber. There's another one just, just in there. Look, I don't know if you can see. Um, that's one poking out of the ground. But I'll, um, I'll dig those up. Um, in the next week or so and, and uh, so you can see what they look like. So I hope this episode has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Little Garden.